Welcome to this edition of A Bold and On Air, the one and only program that focuses on the needs, concerns, and achievements of the differently able. I've always been your host, Lauren Seiler. Arlene is off today. On this special edition, part one of this special edition of A Bold and On Air, we focus on the Disability Awareness Day in which we covered it at the State House, which includes Central Vermont. On this first episode, we focus on a workshop that was taped um, called The Human Cost of Cuts with Susan Aronoff and the Vermont Developmental Disabilities Council. They take a look at the impact of budget decreases on social determinants of health. The Cost of Cuts on Abled and On Air. Developmental Disabilities Council and my organization believes a lot in accessibility, making things accessible. And one of the things we've been learning about is using the mic. We call it liking the mic. So I'm learning to like the mic and I'm going to try very hard to um, make sure you all can hear me. So how do you feel about the door being open? Show of hands. Open. Show of hands to close the door. Okay. If someone near each door uh, would close the door, um, that would be great. So, welcome to Disability Awareness Day. Before we get started, I would love it if you'd be willing if we could go around the room. And if you could just say your name and your town. Because I think one of the most amazing things about this day is that we've got people here from Derby Line and we've got people here from Brattleboro. So I think the organizers of this event work really hard to get people out from all over the state and I would love for you all to hear where you're all from. So if we can start in that back corner, Gary. Welcome. 
But uh, often, uh, loud? Another far traveler. Thank you. Okay, how about if we swing over, over there? And Whitewater Junction. Thank you for being here.
how much of that money they're going to spend on police and how much of that money they're going to spend on certain services, sometimes called human services or social services. So we're going to be talking about the health and human services budget and some cuts that are being proposed to that budget. And rather than just talk about numbers and millions of dollars a year and 42 people there and things like that, I kind of wanted to hear from all of you guys who traveled all these hours to get here today, what the impact of budget cuts, of cuts in services, how that impacts your life and your health. Because one of the things we want the people we elect to understand is that even if they don't cut health care, by cutting something like housing or food or something else, they might impact health care. So I wanted to just kind of talk about a couple of the budget cuts and get some feedback from all of you guys about how those budget cuts will impact actual people, people like you, people like your friends people like your family, people who vote and vote for these elected representatives. So I think if we can start telling the story of if you cut personal care attendance services and someone can't get to work, this is how it's going to impact their day and their life and their children and their family. So right now, there are a lot of groups and organizations here today that can give you specific information, the facts and figures about things that are being cut. And there's some fact sheets on that table over there. And my organization has a table out in the hall with some facts and figures. I don't want to take up our time together talking about a lot of numbers. I want to talk about your actual lives and what matters and what you hear. So, if I were to say to you that people who are getting um, developmental services waivers for things like respite and employment support, if I were to say those things were being cut, could you give me some examples of how that might impact someone's life? A real example. Okay, so I don't know your name, but you've got a great purple sweatshirt on. Community supports during the week. Can someone give an, another example? I don't know your name. Marjorie. Marjorie's example, I'm sorry, I didn't give your example first. The first example was that someone who's receiving community support wouldn't be able to get to activities outside of her house without that community support. And those activities include things like therapeutic um, horseback riding. And the other example from Marjorie was that without um, her social security income, she wouldn't be able to pay her rent. Are there um, other examples? Oh, um, exactly. And uh, I, I would have to support uh, with my wife or uh, I I work with somebody, and without her, I wouldn't have the support. And how would your life my job? For your job. So you need support in order to work. And is it important to you to work? Um, how about um, Gary? Mike can help me to understand about reading skills, understand about some of the basic That's pretty clear and concrete example. And, and also, that um, it's a 
not have so many, so many services. Uh, it probably would cost us some fortune, but it's right mm -hmm. now to, to keep your, your health better. Yeah. That's one thing that people have found is that when countries spend more on social services, things like housing, job support, they end up spending less on health care. Because when people have good housing and they have good food and they have good schools, they tend to have better health. We as a country, we spend a lot more on health care and less on these social supports. Other countries that spend more on social supports end up spending less on health care. Because to Gary's point, a lot of these things like working, um, they can help people maintain their health. The gentleman with his hand up in the front row. My medicine would go up. Your your cost of your medicine would go up without um, the benefits that you receive. That is huge. Thank you. Um, the gentleman in the second row. Eric. Eric. Yeah, uh, I also use SSI. Uh huh. And without SSI, I'm gonna have the support that I need to get to to and from work. So you get assistance with transportation. Transportation is really important, and in um, a state like Vermont, they call states like Vermont rural states, a lot of land in between the towns. Um, transportation is a big challenge, and people who live with disabilities in rural states have greater issues with social isolation. Um, it's just harder to get around if you don't have a car, and then you're more socially isolated. Another in the back row.
at the designated agencies and the specialized service agencies could have a wage of $14. And that was supposed to be phase one. Everyone called it phase one because this year was supposed to be phase two where there was supposed to be money in the budget so that that minimum wage could go up to 15, but also so that other workers in the designated agencies and the specialized services agencies um, could get more of a living wage, more equal to what other state employees get paid doing similar work, or what people get paid doing similar work in hospitals or other organizations. Because right now, there's a staff turnover rate of about, I said I wasn't going to talk about a number, so apologies, of about 25%. That means one in four. One in four workers at a designated agency or specialized services agency has to get replaced each year. And aside from that being very disruptive to the people that they serve, it's also really expensive to the organization. It costs a lot of money. But the reason why they have this high turnover rate is that they cannot pay enough to keep good people on staff long term to do this really important work. So one of the things that um, we've been talking about with the budget committees and that I hope you guys talk about with your senators and your representatives is the need to implement phase two of the wage increases for the designated agencies and the specialized services agencies. We have a lot of fact sheets about technical issues of things like wage compression and those turnover rates, all kinds of information. If you want information to give to your senator or rep, we've got it. If you just want to tell them, I need these services, my friends need these services, these services depend on a well-paid, qualified workforce, stabilize that workforce. So that's a real big issue, and I want to make sure, since a couple of you have mentioned workers from um, designated agencies being the ones who provide you the support, who provide you the services, a lot of you probably got here today with supports and services from the staff, from the designated agencies, and the specialized support agencies. So those sound like big words, specialized services agencies, you, you can just call them DAs and SSAs, and everyone in this building will know exactly what you're talking about. Um, along those same lines, if you take some time today to talk to one of your senators or reps, and I really encourage you to do that, and I, I'll be around, I can help make introductions, other people will be around, you can help make introductions. If you talk to them, please talk to them about um, cuts to a lot of the human services programs. There's a cut to a personal um, attendant services program that will affect 42 people who rely on personal attendant care. And we can get you the facts on that. Um, there are cuts to people who receive developmental services on waivers. Those waivers are going to be cut across the board by about $4 million, 2% cut. That affects real people, real respite hours. Well, real services that people depend on employment really impacts quality of life. So um, please, it's great you traveled here. If you came all the way here from Third Line, like Mike did, and you folks from Brattleboro and Putney, um, take advantage of the fact that you're in the building. Seek out a senator or rep. Um, ask us how and say, please fund those salary increases. Stabilize those services, please don't cut services, please protect our Medicaid. Um, because you, we all, we could spend another hour in here with people sharing stories about what it means to them to have transportation, to have housing, to have food, and how it would impact all of us um, if they did, and how it would impact health and costs. There's someone over here who said smartly, um, how it, it, it's so scary that if you pay for these services, <coughs> you end up having to pay less for emergency services and less for more expensive health care down the road. So please, while you're here, my time is up. Um, my time is up, but while you're here, please um, reach out, talk to a rep, talk to a senator. 
and um, express your views and your opinions. Make your voice heard. Thanks a lot for coming. Well, that puts an end to this part one edition of the Disability Awareness Day special presentation of Abled and On Air, The Human Cost of Cuts. On the next episode, we will focus on bringing down the house. How do you talk to your legislator? All that and much more on the next edition of Abled and On Air. Stay tuned. I'm Lauren Simon.